Hey everyone, today I'm going to change things up a bit. We're going to go after the component clone tip today. This isn't a component, but it is a tooltip. Uh, it's super useful for working with components. I want to show you how it's used and uh, the, the power that it can unleash on uh, setting up these components I've been showing you a lot faster within your uh, creations. So to get started, we're going to spawn one out. It is in inventory, inventory uh, essential tools, and it's this uh, yellow tip here. Once you have one, I'm going to put it to the side so that I can clone it a few times. And I'm also going to create a cube and put one of those to the side that, so that we can use it throughout this tutorial. Now I'm going to duplicate the cube several times just so that we've got a few to play with. There we go. Now say that we have a component set up that we want to clone between um, two objects. So you might say, uh, set up a really complicated component here. I just want to copy its state into other objects without, um, without having to go in here and use the attach component menu. First thing you need to do is set up that component. So I'm going to set up a simple spinner. So transform drivers spinner. And uh, if you're not familiar with the spinner, it just takes a speed on an axis and then it will spin. So I'm going to go here and do 50 and you'll see it starts to spin. Now, say I want to make more cube spins, say like more of these cube spin. If I grab the component clone tip and I will duplicate it. So I've got a spare one here and I equip it. You'll see that there is three dots at the top three dashes even. If I grab the word spinner here, so grab that and I secondary push. It's now copied that component onto the tip. And now if I click another cube, you'll see it start spinning. Let's inspect this new cube and see what happened. So we'll close the old inspector and open the new inspector. On the new inspector, you'll see a spinner has been added with the property of 50 in the Y value, which matches this. That's a simple example of how component clone can be used. I use it for a lot more varied things, and you can find some of these uh, in my logics folder within the my public folder. So you go to my public folder, you go to logics, you go to component appliers, and then value copy. You'll see my commonly used component apply tooltips. I use value copy bool and value copy flow a lot, so I made tips for them. It's a lot faster to use these than to go through the attach component menu for me. I just leave them on my tool shelf and can use them. I'm going to copy, uh, sorry, spawn a value copy ball. And I'm going to open up a cube and show you how it works. So say I wanted to value copy a ball from somewhere in this cube. I can grab the component copy tool for ball. And then I can push here on this uh, panel here, the um, handle it's called. When I do that, you'll see that a value copy ball is then added. This is a lot faster sometimes than using attach component. So if you find yourself needing to do a lot of value copy balls, I add, I don't know, like tens to twenties to most of my avatar worlds. So I use them a lot. That's why I have a component copy for it. One thing to note is that when I've added this component, I can't add another one by clicking this handle. Which I can, because I have this set up in a special way. I was trying to explain that, but I already had this one set up. So let's go over that now. So the reason why I can add many is that if I open up the hand menu here, this end option says ensure single instance and it's off. It defaults to on and I've now turned it on. So we'll open up another cube. Move that one out of the way because that's junk now. Equip it. And now you'll see that when I click here, I can only add one. If I turn off the ensure single instance, I can go back to adding more than one. One thing to note about the component call tip that's very powerful is that it copies the values. We saw that on the slider, but it also works with references. So if we go to the top here of our value copy mess that we made, and we say that the source of the value copy should be the enabled property of the grabbable component. So grab enabled and put it into the source of the value copy. If you're not sure how value copies work, I did a tutorial on them. Take a look um, and it might help you with this one. I'm using a component that's simple, but uses references to show you how it works. So with this reference set, I can now 
grab this and set it as the value copy uh, of the set it as the component clone for the component clone tooltip. And you'll see value copy one. Now, if I turn off the single instance mode and click, you'll see these new value copies that are being added start with the source property being set. And that's because it remembers the values of the component that you copy. We're now also done with that cube, so I'm going to send it on its way. Let's go back to our spinner tooltip, drop it in the world, and inspect it to see what's happening. So if I open the inspector on this tooltip, you'll see here that we're at the root, and it's called component clone tip. It has a visual field, which is the cone on the front. Take a look at my previous video to this, the one on resizing tools to understand and see a use of the visual node now. And on the component clone tip itself, you'll see the component clone tip uh, component. This component has a tip reference, which is the tip of the tip. It's used for the raycasting that happens when you use this tooltip. And it has a label, which determines what's rendered here. You can edit that label, which is what I did for the one saved to my public folder, so that it's a bit clearer about what they're cloning, because that can be unclear sometimes. You could also name it like my super cool component or something like that, if you wish to make it a bit more customized. Then there is the uh, template root variable. The template ver root variable uh, is set to a slot, and it's actually set to this slot here called template. The template slot is always inactive, so you can find it easily. It's called template and it's inactive. And on here, you'll see a spinner with 50 in the Y value. If I change this to 500, and then we uh, cleared the gizmos and re-equipped the tooltip and used it on the cube, that's now spinning a lot faster. Let's get rid of that cube too. What's cool about the spinner is that you can drive values within, sorry, not the spinner, the component call tip, is you can drive values within the template component on the template slot here. So if I go to the dev tool tip and do create new object, new CUI slider, let's open this slider in the inspector. I'm going to scroll down here and we're going to set the value to be 100. We're going to set the min to be zero, the max to be a thousand, and the increment to 50. That's made us a slider that goes between the values of zero and 1000, and each notch on the slider is 50. We can now take this value and write it to the Y property of the spinner. To do that, we're going to need to use a little bit of logic, but I'll explain it as we go. So the first thing to do is grab the spinner reference from the template slot. Spawn that in the world with secondary select. Grab the near slider component and spawn it in the world with secondary select. We're going to move these from around so that the slider is on the left and the spinner is on the right. And then we need one logic node here. I already have a selected, but I'll show you where it is in the node menu too. So open the hand menu, node menu, operators, and then pack XYZ. Pack XYZ converts three distinct numbers, so x, y, z, into what's called a float three. A float three has three distinct parts to it. It's a float variable with three parts. So you'll see here speed is also a float three. So if I pull this out, you'll see x is zero, y is 500, and z is zero. So there are three numbers within one variable here. If we wanted to drive just the Y, we can wire the value field into the Y of the pack XYZ. And you'll now see that the pack XYZ output has 100 in the Y and 0 in all the other values. Let's clear that and then plug this into speed. And now you'll see speed is X0, Y0, Z0. And so it matches our um, pack XYZ node here. If I now increase this slider, it's backwards, so I'm going to flip it around. If I now increase this slider, you'll see the number here also increases. More importantly though, the number on the template spinner also increases here, so you see that's 900 now. Let's pack this logic up by creating a new child here, 
Morning at Logix. Grabbing this, setting the packing room, and packing it up. There we go. I'm also now going to parent the slider to the tooltip, just roughly, because it's a tutorial here, but you could uh, make this more precise. So there we go, we're right next to it. We're going to grab the slider, go over to the component clone tip, and drop it in. Now I'm going to clear my gizmos with deselect all, and close this inspector. Now we have an adjustable component clone tip with a spinner on it. So if I set this down to low, we'll spin kind of slow. And if I set this to really high, we'll spin really fast. I hope this proves it as an example of what the component clone tip can do when you're applying logics to the component that's being cloned. What we've recreated here matches a tool which PolyLogix made, and so I want to give them a shout out to the original tool. It has a lot more functionality and I recommend using it above something like this if you're looking for more control. So if we go to inventory, essential tools, PolyLogix public tools, spinner tool, you'll see this spinner tool and you can equip it and then bring out this UI and then you can configure the speeds for all three axes here. And now you'll see that spinning on the green axis here, 150. So this tool is available um, if you want to use something like this that's more fully featured. I thought it'd be interesting to show you how I would have gone about building this tool and also teach you a, a tool tip whilst you're out there. I can't wait to see what people do when they combine UI or other logics with component clone. You can also swap out the visual of the component clone tip and make it look like the spinner tool here or any other tool. So you can make your own kind of tools which apply these components to various objects and uh, see what you can come up with. I hope that helps you and uh, provides an overview of the component clone tip. I find it very useful. Um, I have a bucket in a folder somewhere which is full of just random component clone tips I use a lot. And I uh, spawn it sometimes in a world when I'm building so that I've got all the component clone tips I, I know and love and need to use. There are a couple of really obscure components which I just can't remember where they are. I write a component clone tip for them and then I know exactly where it is because I put it where it makes sense to me in my inventory. I hope that helps. Sorry for the stumbling around. Um, this is a more complex tutorial as I had to manage multiple cubes. Uh, adding multiple spinners makes cubes behave weirdly so I had to keep all the dead ones over there. Let me know what you think and make sure to check out the PolyLogix version of this tool, which is a lot more polished and fantastic. Thank you. Bye-bye.